Welcome to Dan DGen. We take the more risky aspects of crypto and digital assets and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So today on the channel, we're going to be featuring uh, the fourth project we've ever reviewed on here since uh, November or December, and it's called Sweatcoin. And uh, based on what we've seen, I think it's going to do okay. And just to, uh, to let everybody know, we're going to go over just quickly the overview and the cut, which is the community, the utility, the tokenomics, and the team. And then lastly, we'll take a look at the pros and cons of this project itself. So first of all, Sweatcoin. If you take a look at the cut, this is what we built uh, Dan Degen around, uh, which is the community, which is how big is it, which I personally believe is what drives projects and makes them successful or not. Uh, also important is the utility, is this a Me Too project? What does it do that's different? The team, what have they done before to see what they could actually potentially do in the present and future? And lastly, the tokenomics. Uh, how is that going to do for the unlocks, the cliffs? And how are we going to get dumped on? And as always, we take a look at the rules which are listed right below me as this channel is aptly named Dan Degen. You have to understand, you never invest more than you can lose. So if you have the mentality it's all gone already, then I think you'll be understanding of when I say that never invest more than you can prepare to lose. Next, 100% scams means that everything is a scam until proven otherwise. If you have that mentality, you'll be a lot safer. Next, no exchanges. And we talk about exchanges, it means don't leave any of your crypto on exchanges. It is uh, June 23rd, 2022. We saw the problems with Three Arrows Capital and Celsius and everything that is uh, the contagion that is going on as our market dips down below uh, a trillion now. And uh, it's, not a, it's a recipe for disaster to leave your crypto uh, on exchanges no matter where you're at. Uh, next to last is no leverage. If you're going 25, 50, 100x, that's a recipe for disaster, for failure. We do not recommend that whatsoever. And lastly, take profits. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. And that's what we got. So to break this down, as Sweatcoin is our, our fourth project to review, the first three that we did, we did pretty well. We took a look at uh, Gensukishi, we took a look at Everdome, we took a look at Fame MMA. And actually in this market, we're still up 28, 28X, 2X, and 2X, just because of the community that pushes these projects forward, and they're actually pretty good projects. And I will say, Sweatcoin, uh, as I'm looking at it, I think it could do extremely well, and I think it, it beats all three of these uh, hands down in community, no questions asked. And I will say that, uh, there's some people in the crypto community, everybody has, has kind of like, like a niche, you know, for, for Bitcoin, you have the uh, fundamentalists and the libertarians, and I'm not really uh, that uh, big onto that aspect. I mean, uh, government and self-control, sure, I can get behind that. Then you've got some people who are, uh, you know, finance people or just sometimes just straight degenerates, and they're really into DeFi, and they really love DeFi, and it really works out for them. That's still not my thing. And then the next thing to, to come along, which I thought was pretty interesting, was play to earn. That was against a Kishi play. And uh, I could see the relevancy behind that. And as far as like the utility and things like that. But this one with Sweatcoin, this makes a lot of sense to me. Because uh, just to stay active, to stay healthy, it's, uh, it can be done. And it's just consistency. I mean, look, I got four kids and two grandkids, and it's important that I stay in shape. So with uh, Sweatcoin, I can understand exactly what's going on. So with this one, let's take a look at the community itself and see where we're going. Because again, this is the big driver. And I cannot stress this enough, but it is being the pants of the first three products that we reviewed. So just to dabble into this real quick, here is their Reddit. They've got a whopping 1,600 members. All right. Uh, Twitter, looking pretty good, 191,000. It's pretty decent. Uh, also for Telegram, you're looking at 17,000 plus members. Discord, 73,000. And that's cute. But here's the big thing. This is has been the number one app in over 33 countries. Again, just like when we talked about uh, Genso Kishi here, which Genso, they already had a working product, uh, which was just free to play. Now it's play to earn as they move over to, to crypto. Uh, the same thing uh, is happening over here with Sweatcoin. And they have a working product right now. I have it on my phone. I'm going to show you how it actually works. But it's just like a, a free, free, to, free to earn type of system and a rewards program. And I will tell you this. This is actually incorrect. This number one over 30, that's not correct. 400,000 users in a single day. I don't think that's correct either. Because as things are moving so fast, even for Sweatcoin, yeah, this is on their website, sweateconomy.com. Link in the description. 
you can see they actually have 90 million registered users. It's pretty good. 90 million and growing even faster. And also, uh, take a look at the, uh, uh, how big the app is in, in different parts of the countries. Uh, on June 16th, it was the number one app in 134 countries. So a little bit farther than uh, the first one, which was 33 countries. And even this one's not correct. Because on June 20th, they've actually had an announcement where they are the number one health and fitness app in the entire planet of 2022. So if we take a look at things that are really moving fast, this is a project that's moving fast and it hasn't even had its token generating event to switch over to crypto, which will be on September 12th, 2022. So why is this important? Why is community so important? And it's a thing that I've, I've harped on for quite a long time, uh, especially with the other three projects. Think of it this way. If uh, you have just some average person open up a restaurant in your hometown, might do good, might not. But the hard part is getting people in the door and understanding how great that restaurant is. Now, let's take a look at, let's say Guy Fieri and Gordon Ramsay team up and open up a restaurant in your hometown. How big would that do? Well, depends on the people who like or don't like him, but at least they'll know about him. And they probably got a pretty big built-in community. I'm pretty sure that restaurant would have a way better chance of being successful than one that's just doing a startup. And that is what you can do when you have a massive community of things like this. So a couple of months ago or so, uh, the app, Sweatcoin app said, hey, we're gonna switch over to crypto. And we want all of our app users to uh, open up a crypto wallet. And for every sweat coin that you have accumulated just by do, using the steps and using your, your phone, which is free to use actually, we're gonna airdrop you sweat, which is the cryptocurrency. And within 11 days, they had a million wallets signed up. That's, that's not bad. Considering that uh, Axie, it took them 69 days to do that. Step in 150 days, Solana 270 and near 350. Now that's okay, but you have to understand that Everybody who has their, their app and started to do it over here at 100%, then when they started to get the wallet, it dropped off to half. Then they confirm your email, 35%. Then 26% to open it up, and only a quarter of the people actually did it. What does that mean? That means as time goes on, they'll be like, oh, I forgot, I gotta do that thing. And that's what leads to 2 million wallets in 21 days. Again, took actually a little bit of time, step in Solana Avalanche near Cardano. And that, my friends, is the power of community and why I think this project is going to be massive. So let's talk about the utility. Is this just a Me Too project or does it have some wheels? So I can show you the website and read you all this stuff, but why don't I just show you the actual app, which I've been using for a couple of months now. So let me stop my screen. Let me share what I have here and show you the app itself. So this is my app. It sits on my phone. Doesn't really do anything. I don't have to open it up. It just automatically just counts my steps. I've got an iPhone. It's got a pedometer in it already built in. Pretty slick. I've already got 6,000, almost 7,000 sweat tokens, which again are not crypto yet. And uh, I can click on here if I want to take a look at uh, the actual stores and use my sweat coins. I can get, I don't know, fasting one month free, X to happy. I don't know what that is. 50% off perfect body weight loss plan. Great. 90% off probiotic, advanced summer glow collection. All right. Uh, this one's out of stock. The earphones. Uh, I need to get those. Reusable straws. Just random stuff that you can get, right? Sure. Here's my wallet. Here we've got <laughs> my friends. And this is what makes the community great. I started this about a month ago or so, and I did a challenge on my other channel, Digital Asset News. And I said, look, there's a link in the description. Actually, for this video, same thing. Link in the description. Download this app. And if you can beat me on steps, you won't. But if you could, uh, I'll either the top three that, to beat me, I'll either have you on my show, I'll either do a portfolio review, or potentially, uh, I could just pay you 50 sweat coins, whatever you want to do. So uh, as far as this month, I'm actually losing, which is a bummer. But let's see how I'm doing this week. Oof, even worse. And today, oh, I'm really not doing good. So that is just an option for you. And you can, if you want to follow this, download it, link in the description, just follow Robbie D News and uh, follow me on Twitter and you can talk all the smack you want, <laughs> which is what a lot of my uh, followers and subscribers already do. But it's just a way to, to keep things in. And again, this is available right now. 
And of course, the token generation event for all the tokens that you get, they're going to airdrop you sweat tokens. However, there is a there is a restriction on the territories, which we'll get to in just a second. So let me stop this real quick, share the rest of my screen, and let's keep going. So also, you got to understand this. So that is the part of the utility just for the free the free stuff. But as we move forward, how do we generate revenue? That's the big thing. Well, they did a great article for Sweat, and it talks about the economic value of movement. It says your movement has value. If Sweat economy didn't exist, your movement would still have value, which is pretty true, I mean, just to keep us healthy and things like that. You know, the more we move, the more we exercise, potentially happier, more productive, collaborative, less sick we could actually be. So who would that be valuable to? Well, the value behind movement is the reason employers pay for their employees' gym memberships. When I work for somebody, they didn't pay for my membership, but maybe someplace it does. It's why governments fund cycle to work schemes, grassroots sports, and generally subsidize physical activity. It's why health insurers offer discounts to the physically active. Now that is true. Uh, my insurance company, they would give me a discount if, they, if I could show to them that I went to a gym or something like that. And also it's why the uh, National Health Service has partnered with Sweatcoin. I thought this was pretty fascinating. The National Health Service out of uh, London they did a uh, pilot program to see if people who would download this app were able to uh, stave off or improve their A1C levels for type 2 diabetes, which is ongoing right now. I just thought it was very interesting uh, how they did that. Also, if we uh, scroll down and finish this up, the cost of inactivity, of course, while maybe evident that movement has value, quantifying the value can be difficult. There's no aggregate number but there's a variety of data points that show the cost of its opposite, the lack of movement, which costs the world economy $2 trillion per annum. Who is this important to? Well, providers and insurers, like we just talked about. Or how about employers? Exercise can increase focus and productivity, contributing to fewer sick days, improvement in mental health, exercise associated with a quality of thinking, creativity. And if employers pay for insurance premiums, that's another cost savings. And also, of course, the government, which I know people in crypto don't like that, but it's the truth. The benefit of the government is the benefit of the groups. There's a reason the UK has tax exemptions for employers who promote exercise amongst their employees, increase quality of life, reduce cost of healthcare, and create collateral of member society, both a cost save and a product gain. So the question that would be, well, how do we get this data? And first of all, I guess the bigger question would be this, is Sweatcoin selling our data to these people? Let's find out. So moving forward to the actual part of the utility, Let's take a look at the light paper. So first of all, remember what I said about there's some restrictions? Well, sorry, Charlie, AKA Americans. Uh, initially, Sweat will be available to eligible users who can download the Sweatcoin app. Well, who is that? Well, let me show you who that is. That's not you, US. This is the eligibility section. And it states you warrant, represent, and agree that you are a, not a national resident of or incorporated in the US of America People's Republic of China or any sanctioned country as defined in class 22 below. Before you storm off and say, well, that's just awful. Thanks, Gary Gensler. Hold on. We're going to talk to the CEO, Oleg. And he's going to talk about specifically the United States and what's going to happen in the future. So hold on. So there is that piece, the token generation event, again, quarter three, 2022. Uh, product market fits, and this is something to note. It's been validated by Sweatcoin's success that a centralized regional walled garden currency with a limited range of rewards has gained such popular test popularity testifies the strength of the product, which again is what we, we just saw in uh, that piece over here, 90 million plus users, 400,000. This is again, is just the app that doesn't have any cryptocurrency yet. So moving down. Just so you know, each sweat will require more steps to mint than the last. And to make that, drive that point home, right now, if you use the sweat token before the token generation event, every uh, you get one sweat token for 1,000 steps. Of course, after that, it's going to be almost 5,000 steps. And after that, it's going to be 16,000 steps. And unfortunately, in 10 years, uh, it's going to take 45,000 steps to equal one sweat coin. So that is a deflationary method and what they are trying to do, so I can understand that. And then movement validators, power to you, and so on and so forth, sweat fundamentals. And this is another big thing. Sweat is being built 
on the near blockchain. If you haven't heard too much about near, it's a it's a new uh, blockchain that has uh, pretty high throughput and transactions per second. It's trying to do things on uh, as far as sharding, and it looks like it can keep up, hopefully. But a TGE sweat will be available as an ERC20 Ethereum token and a NEP141 near token. Let's take a look and break it down as far as utility and the roadmap. So just so you know, Q3 is the, is the token generation event. Uh, main feature will be staking, revenue from commercial partnerships. What does that look like? So I broke this down into phase one, two, three, and four. So here's the first phase. And you can see right here that we've got three things that are going on after that token generation event. People will be able to stake it, tiered sweat minting limits, and on-chain and off-chain rewards. So what does this do, all three of those things? It reduces the circulating supply. So for staking, when they stake, the users delegate their sweat to the sweat foundation. Tiered sweat, they can accumulate more sweat tokens. And then on-chain, off-chain rewards, sweat holder tokens will be given rewards in promotion, proportion the amount of sweat that they hold and stake. Then we move forward to phase two, and that we could see around December 2022, moving into 2023. You got four things, dynamic NFTs, crypto to crypto trading, fiat on ramp, advertising. I need you to pay attention to where it's highlighted in green as far as revenue generating. So first up, dynamic NFTs reduces circulating supply. There's also an inactivity fee. And you don't have to buy an NFT like you do with Steppen. This is just an alternative way for you to make even more sweat token if you are so inclined, but it doesn't mean that you are required to do it. The app itself is still free to download. Everything will be free to get into, but again, there's revenue generating parts to it and that's why. So users will have to burn or sink sweat to evolve their NFT if you're so inclined. More evolved NFTs will come with greater rewards, staking multiplier, higher minting. NFTs will need to be fed sweat to prevent decay, which represents an activity fee. So again, you have to feed into it for more sweat if you so wanted to. I probably will not be doing that. Crypto to crypto trading. So the app itself that you're down is now gonna be not only gonna be you know, able to track your, your steps like a pedometer, but you can trade on crypto. So maybe you can, you can swap out Sweatcoin for another crypto, whatever that may be. That's revenue generating, obviously, because it probably take a cut of the trading fee. You can have integration with a centralized exchange or a decentralized exchange. Also gonna have fiat on ramp, again, revenue generating. Usually able to purchase crypto with fiat and of course advertising, which is still going on on this app uh, right now. And is also revenue generating. And this will be allocated to sweat dow. So the thing is, you're watching this video right now on YouTube. And guess what? Uh, a lot of that revenue that YouTube gets is through ads and big ads. So Sweat or Sweatcoin, Sweatcoin Limited, they figured out a way to make this a viable product without even having crypto for the last three years. What was that? Well, one was premium service. You can pay $24.99 and uh, get a, a multiplication of your sweat uh, rewards tokens. And the other one is, of course, advertising. And of course, they partner up with these big brands. So they've already had this in place. Now they're adding even more revenue generating processes, crypto to crypto, fiat on wrap, dynamic NFTs. And that is just in phase two. And let's start going. So in phase three, you got an NFT metaverse. And this, as I understand, potentially, will be overlays and augmented reality, kind of like uh, Pokemon Go or stuff like that. Enrich UX, real world, external brand NFT collaboration to bring more value to users, leverage Swiftcoin relationships with Adidas, Fitbit, Amazon. Well, that's not bad. I wonder why they have all these big uh, partnerships. I'm gonna tell you why, because it's the team and I'll get to that in a second. NFT marketplace, that's revenue generating. If you wanna do that, they're gonna integrate with OpenSea and Binance NFT. Tiered transaction fees, reduced circulating supply, and referral fees, 20% of you sweat on user growth comes from referrals. Now, this is where it gets a little crazy and exciting. Phase four. This is next year and potentially moving forward. You get alternative movement validators because everything that goes on with the app, there is a movement validator. Right now, it is uh, Sweatcoin Limited. That'll be opened up to other bigger places. And uh, that could be, oh, I don't know. Uh, places that uh, have to do with biking or swimming, Peloton, <laughs> I don't know, perhaps. Uh, reduce circling supply, alternative mode validators must take large quantities of sweat, that'll lock it up. Sweat DAO governance reduces circling supply, sweat DAO will be governed by sweat holders, and this is where it's, to me, it's fascinating. Business to consumer movement incentivization. 
Sweat Labs will develop products that allow institutions to incentivize the physical, the physically active of specific user groups. Target institutions include health insurance, corporations, and national government. Sweatkins are already doing this in Web2, working with NHS and BUPA. So here's the thing. Right now, with what they have right here, this business to consumer, they don't actually sell your data as it's laid out in their light paper. Actually, you can see right here. And of course, the link to the, light, to the uh, sweat light paper, link in the description. This is on page 11. Your data is yours now and forever. Sweatcoin has never sold user data, neither will the Sweat Foundation. Sweat Financial will create a platform through which sweat holders can choose to monetize their data. Through this platform, a sweat holder could, for example, choose to engage a health insurer who will pay for access to their movement data, like we talked about in the beginning. A sweat holder could contribute their data to an aggregate data pool, resulting in features such as global activity indices, insurers, doctors, academic institutions, investors would pay for this data, and you, the creator, would receive the reward. So here's the thing. I don't know about you, but uh, I never got paid by Facebook for all that data that they sold to all those advertisers. Just something to think about. So that, to me, is one of those business and consumer movement incentivization things that uh, sounds fantastic, and we'll see how it all works. So to... To clarify and just bring this back, think about the products that you know about right now, either that play to earn or move to earn and how they generate revenue. So remember, this is how Sweatcoin generates revenue. Ads with large brands. There's a premium service, it's $24.99 a year. You can sign up for it if you want to or not. It's almost what we call a freemium. Crypto to crypto trading, fiat on ramp, NFT marketplace, and business to consumer incentives. And that folks, I think is why things are going to look pretty good for Sweatcoin. So now let's go into the tokenomics, uh, which is important to make sure that we don't get dumped on. So this is from part of the light paper. It says Sweat Platform will deliver 10 to 100x value to the user. Let's see. So here's the Sweat Genesis distribution. So first of all, when this goes live in August, the airdrop is a third. A third of all the tokens generated are going to go to the people that have been holding on to their sweat tokens for a long time, and it'll be transferred over to uh, sweat, the crypto. And also, they're not going to burn those rewards tokens in your wallet. You just get both, sweat and sweat token. The ecosystem gets 7%. Team and advisors, because they got to keep this thing going, around 11 The seed round, very small, 2%. Private round, 8%. The treasury, which would be nice as far as like uh, future things and staking, 22%. And of course, Sweat Co. Limited, they get 22% to keep the lights on. Sounds pretty good. This is the Sweat Unlock Schedule, or what they call the cliff. The cliff is going to happen in about 12 months or so. So most of the people, they can't sell anyhow. And to break this down even further, here's the Sweat Vesting Schedule. What you're going to notice, not a lot of VCs. And that, to me, is important. There's a lot of different projects that have a ton of VCs and it's just a recipe for disaster. So the ecosystem, total supply is 7%. There's no cliff, meaning that the ecosystem itself, uh, they can sell, but it's vested literally over 36 months block by block. So they don't get all the tokens all at once, just happens over the next four years. Airdrop, 30%, no cliff. There's a six month unlock. That's for the people like you and you who have the, uh, the app. Teams and advisors, 10%. The cliff is 12 months, meaning that they can't do anything for a year. But then even after that, you got three years for it to unlock block by block. Seed round, 2%, 12. Private, eight. Cliff is 12. Foundation treasury, 20%. No cliff, but foundation treasury, uh, that of course is to help out with the staking and all those things. And Sweat Co. Limited, they've got a year even themselves. And then after that, they got three years to unlock block by block. So that essentially is the tokenomics. But moving forward, here's what it looks like at 12 months. And I will just say that uh, community, <laughs> this is a lot. 84% goes to the community. Community lock drop, community future, community liquidity, third party alternatives and foundation, very small. Moving forward, 24 months, community is 70%. And then at 36 months, community is 61%. And you've got community liquidity, third party is only 11, third party is 1%. Investors and team, 10% in three years. Come on. Foundation at 15%, so pretty good. So that takes care of that as far as token numbers, but there's one thing i needed to point out and that is that this the sweat token supply there's an uncapped supply of sweat to incentivize movement so there's no hard caps like bitcoin 21 million they're going to start with 21 billion tokens 
and build up from there. Because guess what? As time goes on, they're going to have to pay people when something. And uh, that's the whole thing with the deflationary aspect. Remember what we talked about as far as steps? Whereas right now, you're going to get uh, one sweat total for 1,000 steps in a year or so. It's going to be 5,000, five years, 16,000, and 10 years, 45,000 steps for one sweat. So there is how that all works out. And that will lead me to my last part, which has to do with the team. And this is where when we talk about those partnerships, those different relationships that have already been built, this is why, especially when we start talking about uh, Reebok and all these different uh, big companies or so. Anton Drilyatka. Uh, this gentleman, together with Oleg, dreamed up Sweatcoin to make the planet healthier. Amateur athlete, formerly with Reebok, Kearney Sports, MSC, Computer Science, MBA at LBS, Stanford, and Berkeley. So probably been around for a while, probably had some nice relationships. Here's Oleg. Crypto enthusiast since 2012, sees a market with Visa, BT, and Coca-Cola, founder of Bloom FM, strategy with BCG, MA Economics. Here's the co-founder and CTO, Igor, software engineer turned UX designer, XO Beast, now super fit. I'm sure he's got a stake in the game. Computer Science at University of London. Here's Henry Child, crypto native, commercial strategy at Bitfinex and Tether, hedge fund in previous life, previously ran market launches at Deliveroo, MSC Innovation, Entrepreneurship, BSC and economics. So we take a look at uh, where people have been. This is a pretty good, solid team. And actually, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring uh, Oleg on and Ophir, who is the marketing chief marketing officer, just to ask a couple of questions and answer them and see where we go from here. Let's jump over to the interview. All right, everybody. So, so as promised, I brought in a couple of people who could actually answer some of the questions, the hard-hitting questions that we need to know. So I've already done the, the intro, uh, Oleg, Ophir, thank you gentlemen for coming in and answering uh, all these Pleasure things. being here. Yes, fantastic. So Good to be here. Great. Um, so we're, we have six questions and I try to boil them down to the essentials and we'll talk about them all right now. The first one is uh, the app today and brand availability. Second one is why not the US? What's wrong with us? What's going on? Uh, revenue generation available in all countries. And of course, this is broken down by phases. We're going to take a look at the dynamic NFTs. Is this, is this a step in play? And then movement validators, how are they stopping theft? And then lastly, user data, because this is one of the biggest questions I get. So let's start with the first one, phase zero. Gents, uh, the app today is a little bit light. I got to be honest with you. Uh, the different brands that are on there, they look good, but the availability of different things that are, that are available uh, are not so fantastic. So as we ramp up and move forward, what does that look like for people to actually use their sweat or sweat coin to buy these different products that are available? Is it going to be ramped up? When, and is it also a different availability in different areas? Ole Gofir, whichever one wants to take it, go ahead and answer. Let me start. And, uh, you know, if you can, uh, can add color on the uh, sort of Web3 and uh, crypto space. Uh, yes, um, you know, kind of we do have feedback that offers need to be better. And to be honest, in comparison to what we started with in 2016, mm. uh, offers are, you know, kind of leaps and bounds better. The, the bigger we become, the more users we have, the more active our users become, the more brands are coming into play. Uh, we started literally with handful. Right now we have more than 600 partners. And, you know, can, again, this, you know, can, with your participation, with more people coming in, with more people becoming active, the easy it is to unlock bigger brands. We're in dialogues and conversations with all biggest brands, but the bigger we are, the more kind of necessary we become uh, a partner uh, for them. Gotcha. So this is sort of give and take, you know, come over, be active, save your sweat coins and you'd be surprised how you know kind of how over time the marketplace is going to improve and you know uh i also want to mention before i fear it uh, sort of comes in that in web3 the most interesting thing that we see is all the you know the, the number of projects that are keen to work with us that really really want to attract our users is absolutely phenomenal and another amazing thing that, you know, kind of 100% of these projects are actually digital offers, which means that they are available right there, right then, as opposed to you buying something, you're ordering it, then you're waiting for the item to arrive, which is 
you know, massively delayed gratification. So, uh, yeah, on this note, uh, uh, Afir, if you want to add something on to Web3 and crypto. Certainly, and quite a significant one. The ability to offer awards is directly coming out of the ability to attract, you know, to, to, to generate revenue. When you look at the deals you can get for Web2, they are multiplied um, and, you know, I've spoken to different people in the organization and what we think we can get somewhere between five to 10 X per customer that is using the app regularly. Because when you, when you distinguish this person to be a web three, to be in a wallet, to be on a blockchain, then people will pay premium prices to get to them. And we need to understand what's going on in the industry right now. This is not going to stop. These large blockchains don't have users. All they have is developing communities. What does ETH pride itself with having the largest developer community and then all the rest after that. Uh, sometimes you get some products that shine for some moments, but all of them are heavily dependent on the price of the assets. Whereas we are protected from that because of the nature of, of how we do business. So if we are able, for example, we now have 10 million op people who are opted in to get our wallet. When this wallet launches uh, and already now leading up to that, we are talking to people, and I can't say, of course, the numbers, but they are not anywhere in the neighborhood of what you're able to get for Web2, uh, the same people. And so that is a fascinating way to show why the value that users can withdraw out of that is bigger because it's a bigger pie. So everybody wins more. That's what I have to say. Yeah, that's well said for both of you. And I, I got to tell you, because you take a look at the marketing, people or organizations, companies, they pay for eyeballs. Where the eyeballs go, those companies go for. And I, I don't know, wherever you're watching this video, uh, you're watching on YouTube. And I can tell you right now, before you clicked on it, there was ads. And I can tell you 10, 12 years ago or so, uh, there wasn't a lot of great ads out there. And now you're seeing the big, big companies who advertise on YouTube because why? That's where the eyeballs are. So it makes a lot of sense and it's all about utility. Uh, so if you're looking for that, this is one of those products that actually has real world utility, which speaking of, speaking of which, leave me my next question. Why not the US? What the heck is going on here? So I'm just, uh, I'm sorry, I always, I, I have a flaw and the big flaw is I always see it through the, uh, the lens of, of an American. So why not the US? What is it, uh, utility versus security? I know this is a legal issue. We're, we have the issues right now with, uh, with regulation and good old uh, Gary Gensler, uh, but tell me why. Why can't we come into the US right now? It's very simply regulatory uh, concern. The, you know, the situation right now is that uh, um, you know, kind of US regulators see absolutely everything, no matter what and how you do it mm. as a security. We know we're not. And, you know, kind of, we don't want to go into this, uh, you know, sort of conversation. We cannot go into this uh, uh, conversation at uh, this stage. We are forced to uh, delay this. And, you know, we will come into the US as soon as we can because. U.S. was the second market where we launched. U.S. is one of the biggest markets for us in the world. We absolutely love working in the U.S. because, you know, we know how passionate people are about health, fitness, physical activity, and, you know, kind of exercising and, yeah. you know, kind of um, changing their behavior. Uh, we know we are really needed in the U.S. as well because, the levels of obesity and general health concerns associated with sedentary lifestyle are some of the highest in the U.S. than anywhere in the world. But we just need to be mindful that, you know, kind of we, we cannot in this regulatory environment uh, do it immediately. We will do absolutely everything to make sure that U.S. users and the past users of Sweatcoin can come in later and still you know sort of feel that you know they haven't lost an awful lot specifically gotcha. we will be making a provision in the foundation for existing us users to be able to claim um, kind of sweat coins uh, in the in the future i Cannot go into numbers, etc. But you know, kind of that shows that we are taking US very seriously. We definitely value our US users, and we want to make sure that we play right by you guys. Gotcha. 
Okay. And then because I, maybe because, and we cover this in the actual video, when we go from phase one, two, three, four, there's other things coming down the pipe, like pay for crypto trading fees, NFTs, business to consumer advertising, those type of things. That to me sounds like a real utility utility for the token. But I understand we have to play it safe because regulatory environment. So I get it. So, so, so the, the next question would be then what we just talked about real quickly, which is in phase two. It looks like there's going to be additional revenue generation process with uh, these dynamic NFTs, crypto to crypto trading, fiat on ramp, advertising. Again, uh, this will be just the same thing. W would this be global coming out the gate? Are we looking to exclude the U.S. and then go uh, other places and then bring U.S. and other countries back into the fold? I mean, the plan right now is to have all of these utilities offered in every market where sweat is going to be available, sadly, excluding U.S. to start with. If U.S. is added, it is going to be added with uh, all of the, oh, let's, put, let's change it. When U.S. is added, because it's not a question of if, it's just a question of when, then all those utilities are going to be made available in the U.S. as well. Uh, we are developing all of that functionality with a view to being global because mm -hmm. Sweatcoin pretty much is, and mm -hmm. we would like to maintain global footprint. The more fragmented you become, the more kind of country specific you become, the higher the complexity, the higher mm -hmm. the cost and higher the risk in the long term to the business because it just the complexity is always having a lot higher cost than people anticipate. So simpler, straightforward, better, and is also going to work on a global scale. So when you move from one country to another, you're not gonna end up seeing something completely different with completely different user experience, which is extremely confusing and frankly just doesn't work for users. Gotcha. Well, hey, I mean, you got to be safe and you got to be the adults in the room, unfortunately, because if not, it's, uh, it's, it's better to do things now than later. That is for darn sure. And then, so this will, will, will come up uh, as we were going through the video. There was this talk about NFTs as, as uh, third party NFT providers will have to pay sweat to sell NFTs to users. Users will be able to purchase and upgrade NFTs with sweat or by staking. Is this going to be like stepping? Uh, I just had to ask this question because to me, it looks like I've used Stepin before, not a big fan, honestly, uh, because of just the, the higher rates to actually get into it. But is this sounds kind of like this, or is this going to be like a staking multiplier, minting limits, or how does this all work? Fantastic question. And uh, thank you very much for asking it. Um, the, the answer is that our differences with Stepin start you know, kind of um, at a very, very high level in terms of kind of our mission and vision. Mm -hmm. We are here to make, you know, 1 billion people more active and bring them into Web3. And you don't do that or you cannot accomplish that if you have an entry barrier in the shape of you have to buy an NFT mm -hmm. at an exorbitant price. So the biggest mm -hmm. difference in this particular aspect is going to be our NFTs are going to be available to absolutely every person engaged into our crypto. So it is not going to be the ticket that allows you to play. It's not going to be pay to play. It mm -hmm. is going to be as now you come in, it's absolutely free. You can engage, you can get your NFT the development of this NFT that you rightly said is going to be dynamic yeah. is going to depend on your level of physical activity or your desire to accelerate it and invest sweat. So we see it as an engagement tool and a mechanism and a, an instrument to help you find more motivation to be physically active. You know, think of it as a, Tamagotchi, you know, kind of people were spending days, months, sometimes years developing their sort of Tamagotchi. They had their affinity with it. You know, mm -hmm. we want to do it exactly for that same reason, to help you be more physically active and engage with, the, uh, with, with, with physical activity, not 
to serve as a ticket to entry <laughs> and, you know, kind of limit the number of people that therefore can play. Great. Okay. So this will lead me to our last two questions. And, I, and, I, and this one actually is a concern. Uh, movement validators, they're responsible for verifying the validity of movement and updating the blockchain. How do they do that? Uh, because I've seen different uh, posts and things about that, about gaming the system. People will just say, ah, we'll just put my phone onto my dog or I'll put onto this, uh, this, this uh, drill or something like that and I'll just get a bunch of tokens and that'll be that, which will be unsustainable, I'm pretty sure, for you guys. So uh, how are they verifying these, uh, this movement? Uh, fantastic question. Unfortunately, I cannot spell it out for you because <laughs> that would serve those fraudsters um, um, rather than the community. All I can say is that from day one, this was one of the you know, most important things for us. Uh, as soon as you give value in exchange for physical activity, there will be some people trying to pretend that they were physically active when they were not. Uh, very early on, we leaned on and there is a fantastic website uh, that's called unfitbits.com. Unfit it teaches you how to <laughs> trick your wearable or your phone into believing that you're physically active while you're not. And we had to go through all of those situations, all of those use cases, those dogs in the park, you know, those drills and fans and metronomes and, you know, kind of cradles and everything else. Mm -hmm. You name it, we have it. I mean, having 100 million users all around the world and seven years of history, we have spent countless hours and we have a dedicated team that is effectively looking at the movement data for any signs of gaming, any signs of it being in genuine. And this model is, verification model is constantly, uh, constantly evolving. We pay close attention to all of those claims that, you know, kind of, oh, uh, Sweatcoin hack. I can mm. absolutely guarantee you that none of those things on YouTube, Sweatcoin hack, are working. Um, what they do is they can trick your phone into believing or into your, you know, Apple Watch believing that you're taking steps and steps move up but those steps are not going to pass through our verification model and you're not going to earn sweat coins. That is the whole mm. idea of movement verification mm. model. What happens there on very high level, in addition to just step count that your phone detects, we collect a lot of other data that allows us to triangulate and confirm if this is genuine movement or it is shaking or data ingest, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, kind of this model is extremely sensitive and we keep it on a conservative side. So it's not rejecting things that are definitively off. It rejects things that are not correct, you know, kind of, unless it has mm -hmm. a doubt. Yeah. If it has a doubt, it rejects it. So, People would complain that, you know, they walk and they don't get their steps. And we'd like to keep it this way because it's extremely important that no gaming, no kind of false activity uh, is, uh, is turned into sweat coins or in the future into sweat. You rightly said that at the beginning, at launch, sweat coin is going to be the only validator because Sweatcoin is the only one that has this technology and this ability. However, we are in the process of, you know, kind of separating businesses and um, we will create and we will um, motivate, including finances, to mm -hmm. create alternative validators so that they can uh, validate other types of your activity you know, uh, cycling, swimming, uh, high intensity training, et cetera, et cetera. As long as business is serious about validating the activity rather than just simply reporting it, we would be very interested mm -hmm. in giving grants and putting time of our development team to support them so that we can add more types of physical activity and effectively cover 
more time of the day uh, when yeah. you're active with your ability to earn sweat for it. I gotcha. So just a quick follow up then. When you talk about these other alternative validators, maybe you're talking about like a Fitbit, like a Peloton, like some other kind of company where they could say, hey, we'd like to partner up with you guys and we can put it into our program. Then people can earn sweat coin that way. Is that a possibility or something that's in the pipes or not really? It is a possibility, but it is not in the pipes right now because, you know, kind of to, to be, you know, kind of blunt, Fitbit is just not safe enough or secure enough software mm -hmm. system at the moment. We've spent a lot of time trying to figure out how we can develop our app for Fitbit. We could not because it just not tight enough. Uh, we couldn't take, ah. you know, we couldn't keep control of the data going from your wearable into the phone so that we can actually trust it. As soon as that is possible, uh, it will be uh, realistic and we would be very, very keen to partner with, uh, you know, as many companies and wearables uh, enterprises out there as we can. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, not everybody's got a Fitbit, but everybody's got a phone. I'm pretty sure. All right. So that makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then this, and then let's wrap this up. Uh, just to make sure this is the, the big, the big, big user data. So I know in the conversations we've had, and then in the light paper, you say that Sweat Foundation has never sold users data and never will, but you're going to create a platform where Sweat Token holders can uh, choose to monetize their data by giving it uh, potentially to these other places, such as like an insurance company or other places that would like to track these things. I mean, I think it's great because I never... I never got monetized for all my data to Facebook, but it sounds like I can monetize in this way. So real quick, walk us through that. What, what would that would look like and how far down the road we are for doing that? Mm. Fantastic question. And, you know, kind of one of the most exciting things, I think, in our roadmap for me. And the excitement actually stems from the fact that, you know, when uh, first lockdown started happening. One of the most draconian lockdowns happened in Spain. And literally within 48 hours, we saw that the country lost 85% of all physical activity. It was just absolutely incredible. Um, and, you know, we could see it and a lot of other parties um, just didn't. And we had a number of conversations around that and people were just completely taken aback. So, the, the value of info and data that we have is absolutely phenomenal, you know, because, you know, just at a very basic level, having this info, you can recalculate it into extra weight that your population is going to gain over that period of time. You can convert that into an extra healthcare costs and impact on the, you know, productivity, et cetera, et cetera. It's absolutely phenomenally valuable, but, We've never monetized it and we don't monetize it now and we're not intending to monetize it because we believe that it is your personal asset. However, when we decentralize and we create DAO, this information can be passed onto DAO or in fact it will become property of token holders or the data owners. And you, Rob, will be able to flick a switch that will allow you to make your data public and available for external parties to analyze. And the money that they will pay for these analytics, for these queries is gonna to go to you without taking a chunk of that. But the transaction and the interaction is going to be between you and the third party. And DAO effectively is just going to be providing that platform. And the decision on the data is going to belong to the data owner. We do not want to, you know, kind of touch it or take that decision for you. Perfect. All right, gents. Yeah. So this, I mean, it sounds like a great product and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get the message out. And that's why uh, Ophir is here to help us. So Ophir, if you want to add anything onto that, but, but- Yeah, Dan, please. I, you want to finish your thought? No, the, oh, no. Uh, the only thought was just add on that and then just tell us, uh, what's the plan to get this message out there? Because marketing okay, so, is important. 
first and foremost, in terms of the message around the last thing that we talked about, I think what's remarkable here is that this is the topic that people have been aware of for years. They've been hearing about it as an option for crypto. I've been um, promoting it yeah. uh, for different organizations that I've been involved with. And really what you can see is that, uh, you know, organizations like uh, Brave, or others are trying to get to mass market and are trying to turn your data into a commodity that you can own and you can monetize, but that really hasn't happened yet, has it? Somewhere in, a, in on mass scale. I, I remember reading about this back in 2017. This guy put out a book called Bitcoin, Burning Man, and Beyond. Uh, this guy from MIT Media Lab. And uh, if we're actually able to deliver millions and millions of wallets, already 10 million opted in, we get to 20 million. Uh, an X amount of those become active. Uh, and you right. really have so much data, then you can go on and make uh, really interesting deals on behalf of that data with partners and you can offer people the opportunity to monetize. I think that's the next step for the industry. Uh, and I really look forward to the industry of blockchain becoming more blockchain and less crypto, which means more talking about decentralization, user control of data and monetization, like micro monetization and micro rewarding, not just from walking, but from other uh, things as a business model to be pursued more than making your money run quickly through all of these aggressive games and exchanges and so on. So I, I find this to not just be something that we're excited to roll out, but if this is a home run, this is what VCs and investors and angels are looking for in a year and a half from now or even earlier. So uh, I think that's a big shift, yeah, uh, not excellent. just for us. And regarding putting the, putting the message out there, listen, there's really one main thing uh, that this 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 company uh, coming from the Sweatcoin company, which is 90 people, it's uh, worth noting, just the yeah. Sweatcoin without all the crypto yeah. people. Uh, they are in right now, as I, you know what the hockey stick is, the graph that, you know, you grow at a certain level. It's not exactly hockey stick because they entered this year with like more than 50 million users, but we're at a hundred something million people sure. now second fastest growing app globally since the beginning of the year. The message is out there because people are inviting 2.5 friends when they join on average. The message is out there because influencers are not just getting rewarded to engage with us, but they like it. It's about walking and getting free rewards. It's a very likable, you know, there's a lot of influencers right now, including major celebrities that are under fire for promoting crypto so aggressively during the bull run and now being so silent when people's live savings are disappeared. None of our influencers have that problem. You can't lose your life savings walking. So I think the message is something that's going to continue to be very, very successful with friend referrals and, and rewards that way. And again, something that I hope to become something of a study case that people will teach in universities one day. I don't know if some of the people listening here know about this, but in Silicon Valley, regular startup legend and lore you have the Dropbox referral program, you know, and the yeah. Gmail referral, pro get a one gigabyte free for inviting right. a friend. You, you, you learn that, you know, in universities these days. We hope to become that study case, case study for, for crypto. Uh, how do you build a product that goes mass market that's built on friend referrals that rewards people with micro ownership? And that's right. exactly what we're up to. Uh, and by the way, this is why I joined this company because I saw that's what they were doing and that's my thesis. And I was happy to see somebody is executing on such a grand scale. So that's what yeah. I had to say. Yeah, and it's yeah. like like I said, like it's it's to to be on this channel and talk about different projects. It's it's risky because I don't want to have anybody rug pulled. I don't want someone to come to me because trust is a commodity you can't buy, and that's why on this channel we've reviewed. You guys are our only our fourth in the last seven months, and uh, that's it. And we probably won't do another review for another three, four, five months. But I don't know because it all depends on the quality. So. Gents, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on and ask the questions. I do appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. And, you know, um, I, I didn't realize that we were only fourth project. It's an honor. Yeah. yeah. Well, very few. I, I can't do many because let's be honest, there's a lot of junk out there. Oh, fear knows. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> thank you so much. I'll see you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Let's jump Good back. luck to everybody. All right. Great. So lastly, what I want to talk to you about is the pros and cons, and we'll wrap this up. So the whole thing with this project looks pretty good. Here's what I see as the pros. It's got a massive built-in community, 90 million plus people and growing strong. 2 million or however many wallets that they have now is pretty impressive. And again, uh, you can do a lot with just a pretty big community. Uh, I was successful before the crypto with the fundamentals. All they had was the premium service, 24.99 per year. And they also had uh, advertising 
and partnerships with some pretty big brands. And they knew how to do it before they got into crypto. And I think this will just be like putting gas in the fire. Also, there's multiple revenue streams like we talked about. We had seen those over here, ads, premium, crypto to crypto trading, fiat on ramp, NFT marketplace, and business to consumer incentives. So I think that's a pretty good deal. And then it's a working product. I mean, we don't have to speculate uh, how it's going to work. Uh, we, we can already see it on the app itself. However, there's something in the cons I'll get to in a second as far as, as it moves over to crypto. Partnerships and collabs, National Health Service, Reebok, et cetera. The team is pretty good, and they got a large supporting cast like you hear from uh, Ophir, uh, almost 98, 100 people or so. And the last one to me, which I think is a pretty big pro, I don't think people are going to talk about this too much, is just how damn easy it is to use. Like my grandma... If, if I download this to her phone, she wouldn't, that's, that's it. That's, she doesn't touch it. It just tracks the, the uh, steps, gives her the coins, and then off she goes. So for, for me, when I see this, like this has real world utility. It's functional. People can use it. Pretty great community. And it's super simple to use. Sounds good. Well, here's the cons. So the cons is the question of sustainability. Can this economic model thrive? Now, I think it could because the things we talk about as far as multiple revenue streams, but it remains to be seen. And nothing is 100%. That's why we have those rules in place here for Dan Deegan. Also for timing is not the best. The crypto market is down. We've got huge trust issues with, with centralized exchanges and everything else. However, we'll remind you that some pretty big companies uh, like an Uber, like Slack, those types of companies, they were started up in 2008, 2009 during the last huge recession. And they seem to do okay. The next one is the milestone unlocks, which was, we took a look at phase one, two, three, four. That's a pretty big load. Can they hit those milestones in a reasonable fashion and not pull an ETH 2.0? Remains to be seen, but uh, hopefully they can work that out with near protocol. And speaking of near protocol, can they handle this load? Because you have to understand near protocol is just, you know, two, three, four, I mean, three years, I think old at the, at the, the latest. And even when I went to consensus in Austin just a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to the CEO talk and he said, look, because we're super early. We got a lot of things to overcome and we got to do this, this, and this. And, and these things are, are a problem. We have to go, go, go harder with sharding. And he goes, we're just not there yet. So can near protocol handle the load? We'll see. Also unlimited supply, but we talked about that. And then this one, competition. This is not the first or the only uh, move to earn platform. And we can, there's step in, there's a lot of different things that are out there. So They've got a lot of, they have some competition and they don't, certainly don't have the first mover advantage. So can they overtake that? Well, I think you can do pretty well, especially with where they're coming from. And lastly, U.S. regulation delays. So I know that Oleg talked about really moving into uh, the United States, but the question then becomes, what happens with regulation? Will this be allowed? And can uh, good old America, like myself, actually uh, get into these things uh, heavily. And I will just say lastly of this is that this is, I like using this product. I like the people behind it. I like their goals. And uh, for me, they don't pay me anything to, to talk about this project. I'm actually going to be paying them probably a lot of money to get into this project just to be a part of it. Now, uh, for centralized exchanges, it's going to be a little difficult. But if it comes onto a decentralized exchange, you know, so there it is. And uh, that's, what it, that's what it comes down to. Um, what's great about this is because I get to cover this project, I get access to them, get to ask them all the questions. They can come on the show and uh, I can bring value to you. And that's the whole circle. So that does it for today for this project. I know it's a little bit long, but it's, I think it's a, it's a pretty decent project. But again, remember, where are we coming from? Remember the rules. It's all gone. Everything's a scam. No exchanges, no leverage and take profits. If you remember those types of things, even being doing a little degen here and there, a low percentage of your, of your portfolio will be okay. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe. We do these things uh, very infrequently on this channel, but I think they're pretty good products. Anyhow, thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.